HUD is complex, made up of many layers stacked on top of each other. These layers shift and interlock and mesh together. Between each layer, there are a multitude of happenings. Beasts that roam, flowers that bloom, various swampy liquids that pool and flow, and chunks of cheese. Today we will learn about the complex flavors that make up cooking and gathering. Cooking and gathering, like tinkering, is a skill set which can only improve a run. However, it is more opaque than tinkering and requires more experimentation. But with deeper understanding, it can unlock new abilities, improve and strengthen stats, and even provide powerful knowledge of advanced technologies which complement tinkering. Let's get into it. In order to cook, we need ingredients. In order to understand cooking in CUD, it is important to understand where we get those ingredients. Just about everything in CUD is an ingredient. The plants, the animals, and the liquids. All the liquids. The bulk of our ingredients will be gotten from harvestry and butchery. Harvestry for plants, butchery for beasts. The context of these ingredients provides clues for the effects they provide to a meal. Harvestry allows you to gather ingredients from plants, which are currently bearing fruit. For instance, with the harvestry skill you can gather free witchwood bark from trees bearing. Plants which have fruit will look distinctive from others, so you know that they have fruit. Harvestry is a passive skill, which is on by default. Just walk over the plant in order to uh, reap the benefits. Just so you know, harvest plants never become harvestable again, so you'll have to continue getting your farming fix from Stardew Valley. No romance options either. Damn. Butchery works the same, but for corpses. Certain creatures will be butcherable by walking over them. Again, this is a passive skill. Your character will auto-butcher them. If you're worried you may miss some meat, don't worry. Much like scavenging, harvestry and butchery are both prioritized when you auto-explore. Meaning if you auto-explore a tile with tons of harvestables, your character will do the legwork for you. However, this may lead to your inventory filling up with meat, leading to over-encumbrance. Herein lies the next step preservation. Besides harvestry and butchery, you can also find or buy ingredients. Basically every liquid is on the table as an ingredient, and all offer a variety of effects. Even lava can be ingested once cooked into a mouth-watering meal. You may want to keep your eye out for ichor salesmen or chefs at the six-day stilt, as they will tend to have a wide variety of ingredients you can choose from. Higher tier merchants, for instance legendary ones, will also sell rare ingredients like sun slag, neutron flux, and some of the rare unshelled reptile glands. More on all of this later. When you sit at a fire, the option to preserve your fresh food will be available. When you preserve ingredients, it takes the heavy meat and plant matter and turns it into free weight ingredients. The number of ingredients you get varies. You will always want to preserve fresh food. There's no upside to keeping food in their heavy form, and they can really weigh you down, so preserve everything and often. You may notice, preserve your exotic foods. I encourage you to look at what is preservable here, and take note, particularly at tonics. There's a lot of stuff which falls under the category of exotic food. Tonics obviously have their own function and therefore you may want to keep them as is. But other things like organs and glands from exotic beasts or rare plants are still total net positives to preserve. I will talk about preserving tonics later. Alright, so we got some ingredients. Let's cook a meal. The first thing you need to know when it comes to cooking and cut is that everything is on the table. Outside of some very rare exceptions, every plant, animal, and liquid is safe to cook with and can potentially lead to powerful effects. In fact, the list of unsafe ingredients is so small, I'm going to go through it now. Black ooze, brown sludge, green goo are all bad. Don't do it. Just don't. Trust me. Or do, because after all, what's a good chili without a little spice? Sing your heart song. Neutron flux should be handled with caution. More on this later. That's it. This means that stuff like lava and acid are viable ingredients. Asphalt and yucky sounding stuff like spider silk and slime. It's all good in the eyes of Cud. In a way, Cud clues you into this when it describes your meals. Your dude will eat anything. So how do you know what an ingredient does? How it will affect a meal? Like I said, context matters, and you really need to get into the logic of Cud to perform chemistry. For a large portion of ingredients, you can guess the effects based on their origin. For instance, spine fruit jam, which is preserved from spine fruit, which is harvested from fractus, which is a stabby ouchy plant found in the six-day stilt, one can surmise that it will provide stabby ouchy effects to your meal. 
or consider Dawn Glider Tail, butchered from the corpse of a Dawn Glider, a spicy winged reptile known for its heated temperament. One can piece together they may provide some spice and heat to your potted brew. Cooked on their own, these ingredients, like many others, can unlock some understanding to cooking and gathering as they provide a base improvement to your meal. Where things get a little hazy and advanced is when you start to combine ingredients. The logic is still there, you just need to parse it out. You may notice that ingredients have more than one kind of effect they can provide. In fact, every ingredient, with some very small exceptions, have three different effects that they provide one of to a meal. A base improvement, a triggered condition, and a triggered effect. This means that two ingredients can make up several different recipes. I'd recommend keeping a notebook. It can be quite fun making notes of all the potential effects that an ingredient can provide. Or, if you'd prefer, check the Caves of Cud wiki. But okay, let's be real, not all of these effects are what we want, and not all combinations are helpful to every build. How do we cut through some of the noise? Recipes. Baked into cooking and gathering skill tree is Carbide Chef, an imperatively important skill, which allows you to become inspired. Every level up, and 5% of the time you explore a new map, you become inspired. When inspired, when you cook a meal, instead of getting one random combination of effects, you get to pick from three. Better still, once you've picked a combination, your character makes note of this recipe in their journal and can cook from that recipe, guaranteeing the same effects. This means, once you've discovered some powerful combinations, then with a little persistence you can obtain those same recipes in future runs. Speaking of recipes, you don't actually need to reinvent the, uh, meal. There are tons of recipes baked into Cud, ready for you to buy or learn from certain NPCs. Every settlement in Cud will have an associated recipe as well as an NPC that can teach it to you, and if you go to the settlement's designated oven, you can try their meal and see what the effects of it are. Recipes you learn from mainstay NPCs will have consistent results and are the same every run. But there are also randomly generated recipes made by randomly generated chefs, which you can discover by buying their ad. Go and find them, learn their meals, and see what they have to offer. Chefs at the Six Day Stilt will also tend to sell some recipes and it can pay off to experiment. Once you've found a recipe with effects you like, you're going to want to keep them going as much as possible. If you've got the willpower, then consider taking Fasting Way and Mind Over Body, which both extend your metabolizing effect, and also stack. You can also eat food and ingredients as snacks directly from your inventory, which will keep you sated without spoiling your current recipe effects. But it can take a lot of snacks to keep you going, and I find this method to be unworth it and frankly boring, so I don't do it myself. I mentioned before that tonics can be preserved. Tonics are in many ways the potions of cud, providing amazing temporary effects that can genuinely save your life. When used in cooking, they can provide powerful effects which can take a good run and give it nitro. I actually end up by and large cooking with some tonics more than using them, which, by the way, I can do better if I can create my own tonics. This seems as good a time as any to tell you about tinkering tonics. Once you have the recipe to create tonics, it doesn't just require tinkering bits, it also requires ingredients. This is where tinkering and cooking shake hands. Many of the ingredients needed to make tonics can be harvested from plants, or even butchered. And in fact, the recipes for creating tonics can be better found from cooking a meal. Needless to say, cooking with tonics are partially why cooking and gathering is worth taking. An interesting quirk of cooking and gathering is that some of the most powerful ingredients are actually the most common. It would be easy to overlook three ingredients and underestimate their effects. The first one is star apple jam, which can provide increased saves against bleeding, increased healing rate, trigger condition for when you take damage or use salves, and most importantly, remove negative status effects. Two effects I want to underline here. Trigger condition for taking damage, remove negative status effect. Just to add to this for a moment, but I already mentioned Spine Fruit Jam, which can also provide trigger condition for taking damage. These are powerful effects. Do not overlook them. The second ingredient is salt. Salt just tastes really good and makes most things taste better. That's it. Do with that what you will. The third ingredient is straight from the heart of Cud. It is in fact the first ingredient you encounter, notable enough to base the first quest on, and is even mentioned in Reshef lore. Reshef cleansed the marshlands of the plagues of the gyre and taught Abram to sow water vine along its fertile tracks. Reshef knew what he was doing because water vine is possibly one of the most important ingredients, providing one of the more easily triggered triggered condition. Whenever you drink fresh water, there is a 25% chance. 
Combine that with just about any other ingredient and you have the potential to become very powerful. There's one more thing I want to talk about, which is spicer, the last skill in cooking and gathering. Here's the thing. When it comes to cooking a meal, sometimes one is enough, because a lot of the base effects are good enough. Sometimes you don't want to emit fire whenever something happens, you just want to emit fire. Having two ingredients can be intimidating. It's only when you start to get some favorite ingredient effects that it starts to make sense. But it's important to understand that the trigger and condition aren't guaranteed. You might just get two base effects. It's rare, but it is possible, and that can be a really powerful recipe. When you add a third ingredient, you're guaranteed to get one base effect, because there can't really be a combo with three ingredients. So when you add a third ingredient, you're really planning for a combo you like with a nice side. But we're dealing with exponents here, so you really don't have a lot of control, even with recipes. So try to do it only when you're inspired and hope for the best. Don't be afraid to try multiple times if you know the effect will be really good. And yeah, it is possible to get three base effects. When you do, you're gonna wish you made it a recipe. All right, what did we learn? We learned how to get ingredients for food, like from butchery and harvestry or from collecting liquids or buying from merchants. We learned about food-based modifiers and how to make the most of them, as well as how to suss out those effects with the context and origin of the ingredients. We learned about recipes, where to find them, or with the important carbide chef skill, how to make and keep them. We also learned how much we get out of a meal and how to prolong that effect. We've come so far, but in the next episode, well, I'm sorry to say, this is kind of the end. I wanted to set a solid foundation, demystify cut and make it more accessible, and I think I've done that. At the very least, you can take what I've taught you and try some things, and maybe cut will open up to you a little bit more, and maybe you'll teach me a few things. I learn new things from this game all the time, which is what keeps me so interested in it. Things like what to do when you lose a limb, how to cure infectious diseases, or how to eat some of the more volatile foods without dying. Uh, gee, that all sounds like useful stuff. But it doesn't really fit into the basics, does it? If only there was a survival guide to teach some of the really specific spoilery parts of CUD, like an advanced tutorial? Huh. Anyway, if you found this useful or informative, hit the like button, helps a lot, consider subscribing, and until next time, enjoy a bite on me. It may be the only one which leaves you with all your limbs.